hello, this is Doodlove9 here, and I am finally getting back to a video I've been on and off for about four years, and I just wanted to uh, start off and say that, you know, it, it, it has been a long time coming for this. Uh, the video is um, my 100 greatest Smash 4 moments, in my opinion. This is a list of all the other things in tournaments and all, you know, just things that have happened in the history of Smash 4, whether it be a match or something hype, a sick set, a, a play, you know, uh, a tournament itself. Um, just something that I've been trying to get together and I did want to preface by saying since I've been working on this for you know four years there are some things that have and have not aged well you know there is the whole smash ultimate controversy with ally Nairo zero the cat or not in the cat um, Keitaro, things like that. So, seeing how that has happened way after this whole thing, just know that that uh, that was never in the in the back of my uh, mind, nor was that even a thing when this when I started this. So, um, and it'd be a shame to disqualify them having a great moment just because of something that I had no idea was gonna you know ever surface so that being said this is a list uh, from my personal opinion not an overall list of the 100 greatest smash 4 moments I mean should be because I know what I'm talking about I'm only going for swag you know uh, iconic moments, legendary moments, all the way down to number one, and I'm doing this in five parts, so um, the first one will be 100 through 81, and then so forth and so forth, and I hope you guys enjoy it, and tell me if you were there for some of these things, you know about these things, and things like that, so we're going to get started with number 100. So the first match that's going to start off this list is something from my neck of the woods. It's a uh, tournament known as Bros Calamity. And in this day, there was a player by the name of Blind Wizard. Obviously, if you, when you see the, uh, the video up there, you can see that Blind Wizard is a kid who loved playing corn, but he was actually blind. So what they had to do was they had to mute the game um, the game's audio of the stage and they can only go to FD so he faced this kid named Zion and um, I say this is a great great moment because I've never seen a blind person uh, destroy somebody um, and just watch his gameplay like he's able to recover he knows where he's at like th this was such an amazing moment for uh, the people at the lab, I just wanted to show you this is my first um, moment on this list. No, like like the um, like um, Dragon Fang shot there. It's a set timer for how much you charge it. Okay, you don't mash out of it. It's gotcha. Like things you mash out of is like the command grab. That's, it's another DFS kill. That's gonna kill again. <laughs> oh my god! First From game. middle stage, no rain. So after the first game, of course, Blind Wizard wins with Corn, but then Zion he wins the second game. And then Blind Wizard makes the switch to ZSS, and then this happens. Oh, oh, oh my gosh! I I have no words. We we all know how great this is right now. We just we just got away from the kill. <gasps> oh my goodness! Did it. And Blind Zion Wizard does Wizard. it. He takes the set. Everyone Let's at go, home. Let's go, Blind Everyone Wizard. Home. Give him a pause, man. Because I'm sure he could probably hear you from home. Everyone, put your bro love in the chat. 
Oh, everyone my put God. your bros love in the chat. Dude, that was it. insane. Oh, man, did it. Hero of the day, MVP, number one, one wizard. Bill PR. All right, so the next one uh, moment on the list is nothing too special, just a little hype set from 2017. It was too hot to handle. Uh, and we have a, a very prominent player back in the day. His name was Matty G. He was particularly in the New England area. And at this time, you know, he uh, used Cloud, but he used to use Mega Man. And he was ranked fourth uh, in his New England PR. He'd be like MVD, Mars, you know, Kameme, um, Black Twins, Ned, Light, all these things. So when we got to this tournament, Captain Zach was, you know, the end-all, be-all for top competitive smash with Bayonetta. And the character was very difficult. Um, most of the time, Cloud was the character you saw most to combat Bayonetta, if not uh, a ditto. And at this tournament, it was just a very good, like, back-and-forth action between two top players with very top-tier characters. And um, it was just one of my favorites, you know, for number 99. It was just a really hype set. Quick enough, as we see from Zach right there. Wow, and did you see that little stutter with those jabs? Trying to make sure that Bayonetta falls into all of them. <gasps> That's That's what a reaction again from Matty G. Fastest. Getting the kill right at the ledge. A limit, too. So he's super scary to this Bayonetta right now. Bayo oh, yeah. at kill percentage now if Matty hits the right move. Definitely, you know, he has that psychological advantage. Look at that, Matt. Actually covering a lot of again, the landing options. Again, covering the landing option. And a taunt. And a taunt. And Wait, wow. which character? Wait, who is playing which character? Was that a taunt that we just saw? That's the top lasso. He mashed up as fast as he could, but right there, it looks like he couldn't fall out of that one, especially at a higher percent. You want to get. Oh, no. That there it is. <gasps> oh, wait. The defense, the, the defense. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my. That's the clouds up air, ladies and gentlemen. That's all you really have to say right there. It defended him from underneath, actually. That was crazy. Well, has limit. He could actually lit, uh, uh, let it rip right now with a cross slash if he gets an opportunity. Oh, he went for it. He went for it. He's, I love how Matty's staying on the offense, though, staying crazy aggressive. Oh, Did you see? Okay, okay, so right there, Captain Zach, he couldn't grab edge again. That's why he went with a high recovery. What? And here it what? is! What? He did it! Oh no! Oh, Captain, no! Zach! Captain Zach gets the win! And there it is. Actually, a situation where we thought we were going to see Captain Zach get brought down by the second hit of the climb hazard, but no. Matty G. So, in this moment, Captain Zach is here again. I think this was Civil War, and this was Pools. He played Wii Fit for a match, and instead of just normally playing, you know, a, a character that he could probably just beat anybody with instead of his main, he decided to use Wii Fit in the pose that uh, she's known for doing, and um, it was actually pretty funny. So. And it's crazy because he actually won with the move that he was uh, posing with, which is crazy. Zero must have been out on the beach for far too long, but. <laughs> oh! Bro, are you serious? No! Big, big, big! So one of my favorite players in Smash 4 was a simple Mario player from California, Zenyu. And one of my favorite moments is uh, a tournament from Wednesday Night Fights. He was facing against a random Donkey Kong player named Malik. And um, typically uh, in pools or the beginning outskirts of a bracket with stacked tournament players, is that they'll go, they'll do a little bit extra if they get on stream, and this is exactly what happened to this Donkey Kong player. And at the time, Mario was very simplistic, but also very hype at the same time. Okay. No, you're oh, so dumb! Oh, you're so dumb! Oh, oh, oh my god, dude! 
<laughs> don't touch it! Don't touch the mic! Oh god damn! I saw that boy that just happened. <laughs> 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 so the second part of this clip is from the same bracket Zinyu advances in winners as he usually does he was facing against a corn player named Triton and in this clip there was something amazing that happened uh, in terms of just being able to style on your opponent which I've never seen timing like this so this is why um, I had to include this in here as well. Computer chain mode combos. Oh, uh, you dead. Oh! I have to go. Oh, hey, Dynamo, do you want to commentate for oh, me right now? Oh, my God. My heart and soul. <laughs> Yikes. Triton just got murdered on stream, dude. He actually did. Oh. Like, this is like... Last this is week not your fault, good. dude. It it's is. Like... Oh, oh <gasps> don't no. do this no. to him. No. Oh, my God. It's not your fault, Triton. It's not your fault. It's not your fault, Triton. <laughs> The next moment on this list is from Gommel 2017, and this is just one of those uh, upset moments um, from a bracket that I really like. Supergirl Kells uh, was one of the top Sonic players in the world, and being that she was a high seed in this bracket, um, you would expect someone like that to really advance their way to you know, grand finals or losers finals at this, in, you know, in this uh, scenario. And um, Sonic, uh, Supergirl Kells used Sonic, and Smash 4 Sonic was top five character, uh, no question. Uh, he had spin dash cancel, um, lots of damage on, on the uh, spin charge, lots of great mobility, of course, and things like that. But there was a person who used Ike, for the longest, I think he used Ike in Brawl as well. His name was San, and um, he comes to this tournament and very hidden under the radar. And he has to play Supergirl Kells in Losers Quarters, best of five, and he gets the upset with a 3-0 on a much much higher seeded player with Ike of all things. And Ike was a low tier character. He was very slow with his uh, his his sword, his movement, um, hard to, re uh, you know, very linear recovery with side B or up B. But he had kill power, and Sam is just one of those, you know, low-tier legends that, you know, I miss so much about this game. Have those crazy grab confirms. Oh, oh no! God! Literally 2% for Max Rage there. And a flick of his wrist. <laughs> yeah, there literally. Go 145 to 60, man. We saw just how much trouble Max Rage can be in the hands of Sand. Yeah, especially because he has a stock advantage, really. Uh, not worried about sitting back. And just find his opportunities. Oh, that is gross. Two consecutive two stocks. We saw even the likes of Anti struggle significantly more against Kells. Pretty much just a good spin dash confirm separates them in terms of percent, but the weight and kill power are also things to consider. Oh, <sighs> he's so good at covering the spin dash from the ledge. It never gave her a chance to use that option. We've seen her using it a lot this weekend, and it's usually been working, right? So in EVO 2017, there was a hilarious match between Dying Sloth and Lothario. And Lothario uh, is an Irish Ganondorf player. Or I guess he just used Ganondorf uh, this this match, and Dying Sloth used Bowser, and this was kind of like one of those beginning like tournament matches uh, where it's too it's very early in the bracket, so you get you know people you don't really know on the screen, and in this particular match, Lothario was definitely uh, trying to show off what he can do with Ganon in a very flashy way, you know, doing, you know, F smash, like reading air dodges with F smash, you know, the warlock punch, all that stuff. And it just became a very funny spectacle. 
it's some wild charges I'm seeing right here. But however, he got the lead, so I can't really be too mad. How's he landed? Yep. Kind of felt that one coming. It was either that or the. Uh, the oh, from deep. Oh, that's oh. so good. You are so good. Yeah. Oh, gosh, damn. <laughs> this yo, man came to play. Yo, only the, only the hype that you get from the Ireland uh, Gannon himself, bro. Oh, stop. Why is this guy here? He wants it. Oh, I'm, I'm actually kind of tight. He wants it. Oh, gosh. Look at his face, look at his face like. <laughs> oh my gosh, he backhanded my man in the stage. Oh gosh. I, I, need, I need Light the Hero at, <laughs> I, I need light the hero at, a, at every turn, man. This man flew across the country. Oh my God. Flew across the country. You know, like he's sitting on his plane just oh, thinking someone's going to take yeah, the ass back. Yeah, oh man, someone's going to die now. <laughs>So Genesis 3 was a pretty stacked tournament, probably one of the biggest majors at that point um, for Smash 4. And Renai and Foe had a pretty hype set. You know, it wasn't the, the most flashiest, but, um, you know, it was Ness versus uh, one of the best villagers at the time. And, you know, just something to uh, just to look at that I enjoyed while watching it, you know, so nothing, nothing too crazy. Just just a hype set, in my opinion. Whoa! Oh. Hey, All batter, right. batter, batter. All right. Swing. I mean, you can see that near the end of the game, Renai was definitely starting to get it. Oh, and that's what we and were talking it. about. And there it is. And that's that. The this is in Japan at the caliber of foe. MJT is a very dominant. Wow, the double jab to up air taking it. Jab, but yeah. I know this yeah. is absolutely terrifying. Renai having complete stage control here. Maybe a, a miss a miss dash like I'm not sure. A forward smash will whip. They're both feeling each other out. Getting back to the center of the stage, trying to get stage control, watering the tree, power shielding it. Renai looking for an opportunity to maybe use his axe. Yeah, he might mix up the opportunity with his axe and the bowling ball to try to bait out a spot dodge or a shield, knowing that both of which are very detrimental to the shield. Power oh. shielding the back air. Wow. And oh, and Renai with the fist in the air. For those that have been around in the Smash community long enough, we all know that Smash 4 Bayo was pretty much the most busted character in the game. But with this clip from Xanadu, uh, Black Yoshi shows us that not only is Bayonetta broken, but the game is broken. Like right now, not yeah. me. Okay, and... <laughs> Tried to punish it, but there's a bat within the second one right there, potentially saving Bayonetta with the high percent that she's at. What? what? I... What? And sometimes, sometimes you take those. This smash. All right, four so let me be honest. Man. This is this is actually what happened. I'm. At Smash Factor Five, uh, it was very um, heavily um, Latino oriented, with a lot of people from the Mexican scene including someone like Captain Levi. Captain Levi was a very, very good Roy player from Mexico. And um, in this tournament, he faces a Japanese staple, Kameme. And Kameme was one of the, uh, I guess, top Mega Mans to make uh, top eight at EVO of the previous year. And uh, in this match, we finally get to see what the Mexican scene was able to do since um, they didn't really get to travel that much as far as competition and going toe to toe with people from, you know, what is arguably, you know, probably the best smash scene in general, which is the Japan scene, go head to head and him getting a win like this was monumental. And that's why it's one of my top favorite moments. Yeah, trying to make this comeback happen right now. Ooh, just went in there, but yeah. didn't really commit to anything. It was stuck in the sliding animation. Yeah. 
forward air closing out the first game for Captain Levi. He's going to be able to find it. So Captain Levi got, a more, got more chances to try and seal out this stock. Yeah, it was a good attempt nonetheless. As you said, he was trying to go for more damage since he wouldn't have found the kill anyways. Oh, to the lead and it catches him again! <laughs> Getting red like a book. Fucking no percent. Kamehameha just not able to find a way back. I'm still on the chase. Another up air. He's going to oh. find the falling. They're not going to get the force smash, though. Here we go. He's finding his way back onto the ground. Great neutral air from Kamehameha. Sealing out that first stock from Levy. 104% deficit. And the up tilt takes it again. The crowd erupts. Levy from Mexico taking it over Kamehameha from Japan. We're gonna encapsulate the 90s with Mr. E and a double footstool down here. In its heyday, 2GG put on some of the best events ever for the Smash community, especially for Smash 4. I mean, they had Civil War, they had the Fire Emblem uh, themed tournament, and things like this with the Greninja Saga and other many other sagas that was based around players. The Greninja Saga had this one event that they, I guess, kind of copied from Smash Con, which was the combo contest. There wasn't a lot of true combos that were more than a few moves except for Greninja. So at this Greninja saga, they decided to have a side event with some of the the, uh, the best Greninja combo creators. And they decided to have a little bit of fun with this. And it was kind of a different avenue of what Smash was like, you know, instead of going to a tournament, competing, leaving, you got to do some other things and see some other events. So the, the Greninja combo contest is for me what starts off, you know, number 89 in terms of just overall, you know, variety and excitement. He's got two minutes left to make this come together. Does not look like FaZe is uh, phased at all. He's definitely taking his time. He knows huh. composure is going to be a huge part in this competition. Oh my gosh, wow. that pivot down tilt. That is one of my favorite things that he does. Gets that and gets the... <laughs> Oh, oh that God. is beautiful. Get him, Ninja. I mean, <laughs> beforehand, I would have already told you he's like the favorite to win, but after that, that's his first combo. Like, there are multiple rounds of this. That means he has to keep breaking the same sort of heat. So towards the beginning of Ultimate, uh, there was a few more tournaments in the Smash for um, seeing one of this was the 2GG Championship um, towards the beginning of 2018. And I believe this was a round robin of some of the top players or just a group kind of setting. I don't remember. I do remember watching this. And in this particular match, I think, you know, Fatality just kind of gives up on the tournament or on this match against Zero. And it was kind of astounding because as long as Fatality has been in this, you know, scene, we never really see top players really get exhausted or kind of human, to be honest, because we all feel like, you know, playing people that are just on a different level, like there's nothing you can do. You just don't even want to play anymore. Uh, so, it was kind of weird to see someone like this after a few games. And um, yeah, it was pretty amazing. Stage off stage situation here. Good down tilt into the drop zone, but. Oh, the very important tech. And he barely okay. makes it back to the ledge as well. Yeah, really, really good tech coming out from zero there. You see that up smash by Fatality too to clank out the banana. Interesting yeah. choice by him. Very cute. Yeah. Forcing, forcing uh, zero to have to plug another one, but. Here we go, jumping over the entire situation. Not no, even double jump. <gasps> oh, it back. catches it. But he gets the banana in the control as well. Yeah, because I, I think the stage no is... Way, oh my no way! No way! Did you really just try to Falcon Punch Zero at the championship? <sighs> Zero's gonna take that. No, no, you know what's the scary thing, Korean? There's a timeline out there where that connected. 
that <laughs> But Zero Man now looking oh! back at the dunk coming out from Zero. Wow. Great offstage play coming out from Zero Man. Oh, oh and the footstool? Wow. And Fatality not ready no! for this. Incredible. What? 53 damage. Zero's been in the lab. Oh my goodness. Fatality shaking his head. Looks like he's throwing off a little bit from his game, but all it takes is the right knee. He doesn't quite find it so... <gasps> Yo, he's, he's really trying to go for Falcon Punches, dude. What is what is he doing? Is, is it... Oh, he no! Up? And he gets caught there by the down tilt, down smash. Is it is it over? No, 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 no. I, Not like this. Right? He's still in it. No. Oh, dude. No. no. I think he has actually... Wait, like... I'm not sure what's happening here, folks, but it looks like Fatality, okay, unfortunately. Okay, he's, he, okay, he's, he's still he's making playing, it back to playing. the ledge, but he is looking for these Falcon Punches a I little mean, bit. I think he is a little bit shook, unfortunately, by the events of today, and I think he's actually done the calculations and perhaps can't quite make it out. So unfortunate, and that's the, the heartbreaking thing about... Well, this was one of the first years of Smash 4 being out. Um, and Paragon 2015 just wanted, just brought everybody together from the melee scene and new players that haven't played the game yet. And uh, this tournament in particular started off pretty, pretty cringe with um, a, a player named Manny. Um, who every time Donk Diddy Kong did down throw up air, which was the staple for a lot of characters, he called it the hoo ha, and um, very distracting for Hungrybox using Puff as he usually does. He actually does something unthinkable, and uh, which makes it on this list. It's smart. The priority of pound is so good. <gasps> and there it is. That's the hoo ha. Stag oh, yeah, Manny is trying to make this combo the hoo-ha. I think he wants it a little too much. Wow. And that That's it. Oh. Oh, one. One telling uh, Manny to stop screaming hoo-ha before giving up the match. EVO 2016 was the highlight of the premier Smash players. Um, seeing that Zero won it the last year, the first Smash 4 EVO bracket, it was up to the newer blood from uh, all walks of life to try and grab that second title and um, Ally was one of the best players, not just Mario players, but best players who was heavily favored to win EVO 2016, and he did. But before that, um, Abadango was doing wonders in Japan and all over the, the country. And at EVO, these two finally got to pair up to see who was better and going to advance their way onto winner's finals to face, I believe it was Mr. E. I could be wrong, but this one, this match, like I said before, not to, not to anything flashy, just a really hype set between two great players that I like. Control of the stage, just trying to see if he can wall out Ally. Oh, he's looking for that grab, but I don't think he wanted to just straight up, you know, grab a ally like a foolhardy. You know, he kind of wants to set it up. Ally looks like he's trying to bait out this grab, get himself a, like probably like a reverse F smash. Oh, oh, or an F smash? Is that gonna be enough? It is. Oh, great stuff right there by Ally. The patience. Did you see him? He wasn't gonna before he, uh, this game just gets too far out of hand. He's already at one uh, ten. I feel like if he does get up throw right now, he should uh, lose stock. But I'm oh. down to looking for some setups right now. I'm surprised. It's kind of hard, I guess, for some players when they. You know, don't really expect up smash like that. They'll block it. Regardless, good stuff right there. Abenango managing to get the grab. Up throw, KOing ally immediately, tying up 
the set and uh, using that neutral air, trying to make Ally fade back. But I feel like if he keeps jumping like that, he's definitely going to get up smashed. Oh, there it is. There was very good uh, read right there. I mean, Abadango was definitely uh, air dodging quite a bit, uh, and, and he has that you know he has that opportunity to do such. As we say, um, Mewtwo's air dodge really is hard to punish, but right there. In Philadelphia and other areas of Tri-State, you had your prominent players that represented the scene. For Philly, there was 6WX, top Sonic player, um, and Philadelphia had a home turf tournament that was that did very well. It was called Smash Sounds. It was a rap-themed uh, tournament with beatboxing and all other shenanigans. But with Mars being from New England and 6WX coming you know, straight from home, this tournament was pretty epic. And it was epic because 6WX pulling off this tournament combo on Mars made my day. And now 6 is just starting to... Oh! oh my God. Who said Sonic is not hype? That was ridiculous. 6WX advances to top eight, pulling all the tricks out of his hat. Blue Streak speeds by Sonic the Hedgehog. I ain't never seen anything like that before. Now you want One of my favorite things about Smash 4 was the hidden bosses with the obscure characters that could go toe to toe with top players. And one of these things that happened at Showdown 3 was there was a Pac-Man player named Nebula who got a pretty vicious bell combo on Captain Zack of all people, and it was pretty hype. Neutral or approach in this matchup? Mm -hmm. like gonna get stage spike there, but not the uh, the worst angle for him. On the two count there, oh, the hydrogen just missing. Captain Zack finding enough throw though the trade. Gonna be a death. We already know Bayonetta's gonna make it back. Let's see if we get a ledge shot here. Ooh, Handsome with the double death! Oh, oh my god! Just do it to him! Okay! You see, you might not win the game, but I said some. But I said some. Alright. Captain Zach being pressured here, finally gonna find a wish time. Oh, the style? Just let him just let it through. Up smash on the hydrant. Gonna send him away, and that is gonna be it. All right, so DreamHack Atlanta 2018 was officially the last Smash 4 tournament. And I put this on my list for a number of reasons. One, because this was pretty much the last Smash 4 bracket we would ever see. And two, well, let's just say Epic Great Gabriel knows how to go off with a bang. He only did 45 damage, he's dead. That was nasty, and mm. a cup of coffee with no sugar, man. Mm -mm. I'm telling you. Look at that, right? Oh, my Starbucks. gosh. Oh, no. Is he? Oh, Good no. God. Well, I'm talking about coffee. There's 2% right there, 2% yeah. milk, man. You just got drunk. Drowned. He didn't even Whatever. <laughs> yeah, I would make that face, too. So Ryuga and Fatality faced off in this bracket known as Kingslayer 2 and Grand Finals have no idea where it's at and Falcon Clips were synonymous with only a few players and online play. Fatality was the leader of the Falcons and on this particular clip he does footstool Twitter combos in bracket and I was very uh, hyped about this. Yep, Fatality definitely running it back here to FD. No, he got caught in no man's land yo, right there. Yo, the infinite yo. The Dude. <laughs> Only Fatality. Okay. 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 <laughs> oh my god, what a way to start this match. And, and what a... The last clip on this list uh, for this part, rather, is something about Pac-Man and, you know, his very cheesy shenanigans with Free Fall, and uh, the precious commentator will explain what happens, but something like this was the 
thing that made Smash 4 so hilarious and wacky to play, and especially since stuff like this would happen all the time mid-bracket. Really needs to start working here. Getting the double hit off that too. All right, now Cloud is in advantage right here, but only for a tiny bit. Okay, oh my, you... that could have been really bad. <gasps> <laughs> no, 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 yeah. no, 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 that's real, that's real, that's real, that's real. Oh. Because, because if you, when you do moves that put you into special fall after, there have to be, there has to be a certain threshold of time that's passed before you can actually clear the special fall flag and go back to being idle. Angel didn't hit that. So therefore, when he hit the ground, Hydra pushed him off immediately, and he was still on the free fall flag, so he died. This game literally makes me sad. 